Hey guys, welcome to CFCO at Home. I'm Cheryl. That is Dave. Which which way you are you? <laughs> is your mic off, I'm Dave? Just, just pretending. Again. You're such a jerk. <laughs> no, what I do every week. Every week it works. Every week. I should have known better. I should have known better than to fall for that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, welcome to week whatever of CFCO at home. I don't know. What is this? Five, six? Five or six. I'm losing yeah. track now. Uh, but we're very excited because we have uh, a very special guest joining us today. Eric What's Etheridge. Up? What's up, everybody? Hey, Eric. <laughs> we're doing fantastic. So I guess we'll start off with is um, where are you at during this pandemic? I know you spend a lot of time down in Nashville, but are you there? Are you back in Sarnia, your hometown? Uh, yeah, well, we've been sort of all over the place. Um, uh, we were in Nashville when things started to get really bad. I was on tour with Gord Bamford in Manitoba, and then uh, we, we met at Sarnia, and then we drove all the way to Saskatchewan and then back to Sarnia. Um, and so we're here for the time being right now. So, so far spending some time in Sarnia and what are you doing to pass that time? Picking up any new skills? What are, what are you getting into? Yeah, I, uh, well, um, my wife and I have been writing songs. We've also been writing songs with other writers in Nashville, just over FaceTime and Skype and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, and just sort of just planning, planning out what we're going to do for the, the next while here. Um, we're, we're probably going to go visit some family at some point, I think. Uh, so yeah, we're just, and, and getting some sleep too. Some sleep is that's one thing that I did not anticipate getting as much as I have been. <laughs> so, yeah, because for someone who's out on the road all the time, this must be kind of a strange experience to be at home for like what, like two months now. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. But I'm definitely have not been. Uh, I, I it's the first time I haven't been sleep deprived in a while, so I'm grateful for that for sure. And it's you know it's been nice to be able to spend time with family. That's been really good. But we. We, honestly, we would not have got this family time otherwise. So, so I know you've got a few things going on these days. Uh, first of all, though, I got to touch on this because I saw you tweet about it. Your wife quit drinking coffee. What, what's up with that? And and how's that going so far? Lasted a good twenty four hours. <laughs> so, I'm uh, I, I'm addicted to coffee very much. So she's even more addicted to coffee. Uh, so when she told me she was going to go off coffee for a bit, um, that was impressive. But like if anyone here has ever gone off coffee and you drink a lot of it, it is not a pleasant experience. Um, so I don't blame her. Like I was like, honey, just drink one because, you know, I, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> why, are you t why? Why? You know, we both know you're going to start drinking coffee again. Come on. Um, and. And was so, she all jittery and hand shaking? Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, I know for she had a really, really bad headache from it. I know when I've tried to quit coffee, I get like flu-like symptoms. Like I get the chills. Mm. I get like I feel like uh, I get it's it's wild. But yeah, so that's why you just never quit. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Was there a reason why she was quitting, or like um, just to try? Uh, I think it's just because we've been. She she was going to try a cleanse for the week, uh, and she's sort of been doing kind of she's been doing cleanse still but but uh i think it was ambitious to do the cleanse and skip coffee and so uh you know i mean i i she's got more willpower than i have so i tried i'm like i'm gonna do the cleanse with you i made it till like noon that day and i was like all right I'm gonna do it. <laughs> um yeah so i was proud of her for sure <laughs> but so what's your go-to coffee order eric if uh by the next time you're down this way we'll get uh, the coffee back, like my soul yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm write perfect. That for future yeah. reference. Super easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Black likes soul. Okay. Just write it <laughs> so, so Eric, I know that this must be a very strange time because you released a new EP and a new song, and then everything kind of happened. So, mm -hmm. what what's the process been like going out and promoting? You know, the new single and the new EP. It's been tough. It's been Tricky. I mean, we everything was was lined up really well. We were going to tour across Canada with uh, Gord Bamford. We already started that tour, um, and then you know, and then we had to cancel it like three shows in. So it was a bummer for everybody. Um, but at the same time, I mean, the the promotion process has been has been good. Still, a lot of outlets have been have been covering uh, the the new releases and whatnot. It's got um, some good press that way, and um, you know, it seems like people are listening to the music. It's climbing the charts. I think it just hit top forty this week, which is 
really exciting across Canada. So thank you guys so much for playing Dream Girl. Um, I really, really appreciate it. You guys have been super supportive. So thank you so much uh, for doing that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the new music. We're, we're not really slowing down. Like I'm, I'm gonna, at some point, uh, Kelsey and I are gonna drive our way out to British Columbia. We're gonna record the rest of the record and, and I wanna get the rest of that out this year. Um, you know, just because the, the world shut down, I'm, I'm still going to be creating music and, and putting out new stuff for people to listen to. So. All right. Well, that, with that being said, uh, do you want to play a stream girl? Would you, would you be willing to do that for us? I would love to do that for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> fall asleep, baby. I don't even want to close my eyes. Cause I'm seeing you, baby. Yeah, it's a little worse every time. I toss and turn and check my phone. It ain't to keep going. Out of my head, out of my mind, out of my bed tonight. You were my dream, girl. Everything about it is why do you have to walk away, leave, girl? Why do you have to walk away? We used to be all night, kissing on the covers, you were all mine. Everything was good until you said goodbye to me. Oh, now you have to build a dream, girl. Splash of water on my face, maybe. That'll keep me a little bit longer. Bottom way, things go crazy. It's killed me, and I ain't getting any stronger. You make them soft and pillowcase. But girl, you know I can't raise you out of my head, out of my mind, out of my bed tonight. You were my dream girl. Everything about it in me, girl. Why do you have to walk with me, girl? Why do you have to walk away? We used to be all night Kissing on the covers, you were all mine Everything was good until you said goodbye Oh, now you're the deep of the dream, girl Now you're the deep of the dream, girl Yeah, yeah Out of my head, out of my mind, out of my bed, dream girl. Oh, why do you have to walk away? Everything about it in me, girl. Why do you have to walk away, leave, girl? Why do you have to walk away? Used to be all night, kissing my covers, you were all mine. Everything was good until you said goodbye. Oh, now you're the dream girl. Oh, now you're the dream girl. Oh, dream girl. Dream girl. All right. Good stuff. Thank you guys so much. That's fantastic. Thank you. So before we go any further too, because uh, we're live on Facebook right now with uh, sure. Eric Etheridge. If anybody has any questions for Eric, uh, you can just uh, comment on the post on Facebook and uh, maybe we'll get around to asking Eric some of these questions uh, a little bit later in the interview. But um, can you tell us a little bit about writing the song Dream Girl? What was the, the process like? Um, well, it was interesting. I wouldn't know because I didn't write this one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it was actually written by Dan and Che, which is really, really cool. Um, so this is the only song on the record I didn't write. We just, um, we came across it and I, I had to record it because I just loved it so much. And it was a weird story because six months before I got this song, I had this exact idea and I, and I brought it into a few writers in Nashville and I was like, you know, this, I have this idea for dream girl, dream comma girl. And no one really 
really liked it that like the idea so we didn't we never wrote it and then six months later i got an email with this song dream girl written by dan and shay in my email inbox and i absolutely loved it and i was like we need to record this immediately it turned out really really well and and sure enough it's uh just hit top 40 in canada so we're really excited really excited about that now is that a struggle eric when it comes to writing uh and the process of that do you have to go back sometimes and go, oh, wait, I think this has been done before or a certain line or a certain riff in a song? Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling. Because it, is, it is tough. It's tough. <laughs> uh, I was writing today, actually, and, and earlier this week. But, yeah, it's tough. I mean, how do you, you know, if you, if you think about country music, it, it, there's a lot of different, uh, well, there's a lot of different topics in country music. But one of the, the things that, there's a, a lot of them are also the same. I mean, we, we country music is all about, relationships, love, heartbreak, um, having a good time, those, those sorts of things. So how do you, how do you say that? And how do you convey that message to, um, people in a different, fun, exciting and, and new way? And that is where the challenge is, is being able to do that in a new and from a new and interesting perspective. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, a challenge, but I'm very fortunate to, um, have the opportunity to work with some very, very talented writers in Nashville. And so that's been a fantastic learning experience over the last year. So being home during the pandemic, are, do you find that you're writing more music right now or are you inspired? It's, a, I'd say it's about the same. Um, roughly. Like I, I would say, well, I used to write probably five times a week. Uh, and now we're probably two to three because all, all writers now are writing over zoom, which is kind of interesting. For me, it's been okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. It's a little weird because there's like a lag and you're talking over each other and you try to sing something and and uh, people, it'll lag out and the internet will cut out. <laughs> so there's there's other challenges that are associated with that, but it's been okay. I mean, I've, I've written a couple of really cool songs that uh, I really like uh, just over Zoom during the pandemic. So um, there is more time for that. I mean, I think everyone's finding um, having, having this forced time off, I guess, you're probably finding the time to tackle the things that you may have put to the side or never get a chance to do. So that's, you know, I've been focusing on other things as well. So that's, that's really good. Well, you've also been uh, focusing on family. I have to say, congratulations. You're about to become an uncle I hear for the first time. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been really, really great that way. Uh, although we haven't seen them in like two months, even though they're like five minutes away. Um, but yeah, we're very excited. My, my brother, who's also my lead guitar player, uh, is having a baby girl, him and his wife are having a baby girl, uh, in September she's due. So that is very exciting. We're the whole family's really pumped. This will be, um, the first time that Kalski and I will be an aunt and uncle and, uh, we can't wait to spoil, uh, spoil our niece. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Sarah, the uh, Amazon order is already starting to roll in, like the boxes yeah. at the doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> I, know my, I know my sister-in-law, Brittany, has already started picking out baby clothes. Like, she's got the outfits pre-planned for the next, like, three years, probably. Day, you know, this will be March 12th of 2021. This is what you're going to wear. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So you got that going on. You're about to become an uncle. And, and we got to say congratulations on all the CMAO nominations, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's been an honor, um, you know, to be nominated for several awards this year uh, is really, really cool. I think it's the first time I've ever been nominated for. It's always awesome to be nominated for one, but to be nominated for three is even is even cooler. And there's a lot of Canadian talent in Ontario itself. Um, so just to be on the board with some of those people is is a huge, um, huge compliment. So I'm pumped. Thank you, guys. Now awards, is that something, do you, do you think about that? Do you worry about that? Or is it just something that, you know, it's nice if it happens. It's, I think it's one of those things. It's nice if it happens. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, like, uh, cause we're, I'm not in this for awards. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't do music to, to get, to gather awards and put them on a shelf. I, I play music because I, I, I absolutely love performing for people, getting out there and connecting with people through music and, and uh, putting out music into the world. That's what I love to do. And that's why I do this. So, yeah, I mean, awards are definitely nice, but, um, you know, I definitely, definitely a very small part of, of why, why I spend my life doing music. Now, if you end up winning an award, do you have a spot picked out? I I've heard of uh, actors and actresses leaving it in the bathroom so that people can practice acceptance speeches. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I would say that I do have a spot for you, but I don't even have a shelf right now. So uh, I don't even <laughs> we should live in, I'm, I don't know. I have to ask my parents where they want to <laughs> put it up. <laughs> I think you just, carry, you just carry it around with you, Eric. And that way, like, you take off your coat and you'd be like, oh, look what fell out. A CMA award. How did that happen? I don't know if you saw this, but it's uh, it <laughs> weird how that fell out. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. So, Eric, you mentioned you've been writing during this pandemic. Are there any other activities, any new skills that you picked up? I saw you and your wife had posted a workout video with your dog getting in the way the whole time. Yes. Yeah. And you might have heard it, that little lunch came around. She was barking just a minute ago. Um, yeah. We actually, um, uh, I started doing yoga with Kelsey. She is a yoga master, and it. And I've been, I've been active and and training for over a decade and yoga just makes me feel like I never was an athlete at all because it's really really difficult and super challenging and I underestimated how hard it is but it's super hard um, and it's great for you um, another thing we're doing we've been meditating a lot more which is awesome we've been meaning to get into that meditation has been a game changer for us and, and uh, you know it's it, that's been awesome it's been you know having time to try some new things uh yeah no that's those are probably the two big things um we're going to be starting to shoot more music videos and and do some more content as well um just getting settled in here first before we, we start tackling the other things but it's so true yoga is one of the hardest things i remember trying it the first time and there was this old guy almost 70 twisted around like a pretzel and i was like i am now the most uncoordinated human in in the room and anywhere because i couldn't do it yeah, it's really unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah, it, it definitely exposed my uh, my inflexibility. Let's say <laughs> for sure. So you were talking about shooting music videos at home, but I saw you were able to shoot the music video for Dream Girl before all this happened, yeah. uh, and it features some some rescue dogs. So tell us tell us about that. Yeah, well, you know, we it, yeah, we're lucky that we got to shoot it then because it was probably a couple days before everything was just shutting down. So we were able to shoot it in Nashville. Um, they partnered, the label that, that I'm with partnered with Wags and Walks, which is a big um, rescue organization in the United States. So we had a dog from there. We had some other uh, friends' dogs in there. And then of course, um, Kelsey was in there with the the lead love interest in this in the video, which is our dog, Luna. Um, so I fell in love with Luna in the music video. and. She was my dream girl, basically, is the storyline <laughs> of the video. Turned out really good. I'm, re I'm really, I'm really happy with how things went with that. She was a good actress, and and uh, if you watch the video, you'll see how creepy I am with Luna. Like I'm like in love, and then Kelsey's got to take the dog from me, and she's like, "Get, get, get away from my dog, you weird man." Uh, it's pretty funny. So yeah, I know it's good. It's really good. All right, I'm going to jump into one of our Facebook questions here for you because a couple of people have asked us sort of the same thing. If you could duet with one person, uh, who would that be? Uh, if I could duet with one person, it would be my yeah, anyone, wife. your choice. My wife, Cassie Kulik, hands down. So, uh, yeah, and we have done duet before, um, but yeah, I know it's it's on my first record. It's called "If I If I Had You." Uh, and I just love, I love singing with her. I love songwriting with her, but I, I also love singing with her. Our voices blend really well together. And yeah, so um, I'm fortunate enough for that dream to have come true already. Do you think, do you plan on doing any more duets together or? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and that's actually probably what we'll be doing throughout the pandemic, I would think. Like we'll do stuff on our own, but I'm sure we'll do, we'll do videos together as well. So we're just setting the stage for that as we speak right now, actually. All right, I heard you were gonna perform another one for us. Uh, so what are you uh, what are you performing now for us? Uh, yeah, so this one, um, so the, as you guys had mentioned, the album just came out um, two weeks ago. And so that's been really exciting. And, and uh, this is one of the songs on the record, which, uh, which I, I co-wrote with a couple of buddies in Nashville and I wrote it actually about my wife um, before we got engaged. And this song's called Break Your Heart. Check it out. <laughs> see it in the movies. The girl meets a guy, says hi, now later they fall in 
law They don't break It never made sense to me You can find someone right out of the blue Too good to be true Then I met you I Cause I ain't never gonna break your heart Life gets a little heavy and it's bitter when you're in my heart Over oh, here is such a heaven, I know I would never make it through I'd be a fool if I ever let it let go of you I knew it from the start I knew it from the start I ain't never gonna break your heart What you don't see Cause every time you close my heart beats out my chest I still get nervous Yeah, you really do it to me You let those eyes flash that smile to let down I swear, I swear, I swear I ain't ever gonna break your heart Life gets a little heavy and it's better when you're in Yeah, we got it. We got to see Luna now. I mean, she's your new duet partner, apparently. Clearly, she's been. Oh, look at this little munch. Oh, now your story, are you? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's her favorite song. I apparently, or her least favorite. I don't know. Whatever she was. Maybe it is her favorite though. But yeah, she's. Uh, none of us have been getting haircuts, especially this one. So she's getting a good, good throw going. So she's. It's a good look on her, I think. So. Yeah, she's been loving the lockdown, by the way, loving it. Mom and dad are home all day. How many walks a day is, uh, is she getting these days? At least two. She's got grandma and grandpa and both her parents uh, taking care of her. So she's just having a blasty blast. So, yeah. She probably doesn't know what to do because, I mean, both you and, and Kelsey are both on the road all the time. Exactly. So this is probably just like, this is great. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah. No, I know she's so used to being gone and especially when we're in Nashville where like sometimes the day gets away from you, you'll be in a right and then you'll be having a meeting or, and things go longer than you expect. And, and so she's just loving having us home all day, every day. It's been great. So we're happy that she's happy. Um, but yeah, she still gets a little fired up sometimes, I guess when, when I'm playing music. <laughs> <laughs> so there was one other Facebook question I wanted to uh, throw your way, Eric. Someone was asking about, uh, same sort of a, a question as the first one. If you had to do a duet with a guy or a musical collaboration, um, who who would that be? Who's on your wish list? Ooh. Um, if I had to do a duet with a guy, I would probably say, you know, I'm a, well, I'd probably say Dan and Shay, but good. I mean, you know, I just cut one of their songs, Dream Girl, which is really cool. It would be awesome to do do something with those guys. You know, they're super talented um, and great songwriters. So yeah, that would be, that would be killer. If we could do that someday. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. 
say fingers crossed. Uh, Ted also wanted to know, uh, where do you think you might perform in our area first when we get the all clear for concerts? Ooh, well, the last show we had in Chatham was at the Kent, uh, which was awesome. That was really awesome. So, uh, I mean, if not there, like I, I know there's, I believe there's a theater in Chatham as well, right? I think Aaron Prichette yep. played there last year and Brett Kissel played and Dan Davidson was there. Yep, um, we've got the, yeah, the Chatham <clears throat> Capital Theater. Capital Theater, that's what it is. Yeah, so if we didn't do the Kent, maybe we do the theater, I don't know. So, I mean, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I mean, the plan was to play in Chatham this year and, you know, on top of everything, but um, so we will definitely be doing that. I think once this is all over, we're going to be touring our butts off. That's the goal. We're going to be playing everywhere we can. So, um, yeah, so you bet we will be there. So. I mean, there's so much up in the air right now, right? I mean, how will concerts even look uh, moving forward? But uh, let's hope we get through this sooner as opposed to later. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. As long as, as, as with as many people healthy as possible, you know, as few. Yeah, exactly. So absolutely, that's the goal right now. We're all, we're all in it together. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. So Eric, if anybody is looking for the EP, either of the songs you performed tonight, are those available on Spotify? Yes. streaming yeah. that kind of thing available on all the streaming services you gotta head to my website as well ericetheridge.com um and all the social media stuff as well as uh 92.9 you can you guys can check uh right here out if you want to listen to uh some eric Etheridge as well so thank you guys eric thank you so much for joining us tonight really appreciate it i i know you want to get back to your wife and, you, and your dog and your dog probably wants a walk so uh thank you so <laughs> much uh, for taking some time out tonight we really appreciate it well, thank you guys so much for having me on the show and I uh, hope you guys stay healthy and stay well. And uh, yeah, let's do this again sometime and hopefully, hopefully next time we'll be playing in Chatham. So. Nice. Fingers crossed. All right, guys. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric.